All right. So one of the last things that we're going to talk about today for um, the integrated identity management is cloud computing and being able to utilize shared remote computing devices for the purposes of hopefully improving efficiency, productivity, uh, sometimes performance, definitely reliability, scalability, and um, if you're good about it, security. So usually um, the, the whole cloud concept and talking about the different services with, with cloud computing uh, involves you actually outsourcing different computing devices to those cloud companies like Microsoft or Amazon or uh, Rackspace or uh, DigitalOcean, whoever. So, um, you know, it used to be that everything would be done um, internally and now uh, not so much. It's, it seems to be much more cost effective to begin to outsource um, or uh, not host it and pay labor costs for people to keep on staff. So w why is this such a big deal? Well, an easy way that I like to typically talk about this is, um, and I saw this um, at a uh, conference a few years ago and I loved the idea. And uh, <clears throat> so if you think about it from uh, a pizza perspective and pizza as a service, um, and just bear with me as I, I kind of go through and, and metaphorically kind of try to explain it. So traditionally, you know, up to about 10 years ago, we would do everything on premise. So that means that, you know, we would have to build out a, a server room uh, or a lab or a secure area where we could, you know, put air conditioning in there or condition the air. We'd have the plenum floors. Uh, we'd run cabling in there. Um, you know, we'd have to spend a lot of money on the the backups, you know, the UPSs, and um, and that worked. It definitely worked. And but basically, we would have to buy everything, right? And and the, the hardware and the equipment. And, and um, you know, a lot of times, what we hear about is Moore's law that every eighteen to twenty four months, um, computing devices. Uh, double in um, processing capability, double in computing power, um, and really the the end of life, if you will, for staying on the uh, latest technology is about every 18 months. So trying to keep up with that is very, very costly. So we would buy you know 42U rack mounts, and uh, have servers to you rack mounted servers in those um you know we'd we'd uh you know provision those assets using virtualization or whatever techniques were available and you know from that it it was quite robust but the most costly thing would be the labor to administer that so people on staff that we would experts who we would have to keep on staff that would, uh, you know, provision and create um, all sorts of different things for us. And so uh, metaphorically, if in the pizza as a service connotation here, uh, the traditional on premise, and again, probably about 10 years ago was uh, when we started to see a lot of the cloud computing talk come into play. Uh, the traditional on-premise, pretty much you're doing everything yourself. And so if, if you're making a pizza, for instance, you have to have the dining room table, you provide the, the soda or the drink, the water, uh, you gotta pay for electricity and gas, you gotta cook it in the oven, uh, maybe even have uh, a fire to get it nice and thin and crispy or however you like your pizza. Uh, you gotta make the pizza dough, let it rise, uh, procure the tomato sauce, whether out of jar or maybe you got a, a robust garden with a bunch of tomatoes and herbs and spices. 
Uh, you got to figure out what toppings you want on it. And of course, top it all with cheese. So you're making all of that. Um, you're responsible for it. And in the, you know, in the sense of a, a pizza, yeah, I think we all can do that, right? But in this, in the sense of a, uh, a data center or the sense of a building a, a network or building a domain controller or building a, um, a web server or a database server or whatever, um, you know, that really would come into play because you might need to call in a hired gun, somebody who is uh, on your team or maybe not on your team that would come in and, and help you implement that. But essentially, if it was on premise, you had to do everything yourself. Well, with the the um, adopt adopting of the cloud technology, what we've seen is a push to um, moving things up to using either Microsoft's cloud or Amazon's cloud. Those are the two most popular. And so, you know, the other extreme going from, you know, the on-premise to a software as a service model means that basically you're paying a monthly fee for the vendor to manage everything for you. So essentially in the, in the, the pizza model, basically, you know, you're dining out, you're going to a, a fancy Italian restaurant, you're getting a, a pizza made for you, or maybe going pizza, Hut. I don't know where you're going. Uh, we like pieology over at Bridge Street, or we, we used to. Um, so the, the software as a service is kind of like the, the extreme, where the, uh, the user of a software as a service is allowed to use a specific application that executes services on the service provider's environment. An example of that would be um, maybe using Word, Microsoft Word, up in the cloud, or maybe use Adobe PDF up in the cloud, and you have to save everything up into the cloud via web interface. So um, those are the software as a service. Then we kind of get into um, a pick your poison kind of kind of deal here, where the infrastructure as a service and the platform as a service. One would be more of like a, a take and bake, maybe a Papa Murphy's or maybe you go up to Publix or Kroger and, and buy something out of the freezer and then throw it in your oven at home. That would be more of a, a infrastructure as a service. And I'll talk about that here in a second. Or if you call up uh, Domino's or Papa John's or uh, you know whoever and get them to deliver, you still have to provide you know the things at your house, like the dining room table or the soda, uh, but everything else is done for you. Everything else is done for you. It's basically turnkey and, and um, you know, it's delivered to you. So with the platform as a service in that model, the user gets to access the computing platform that's typically built on a server operating system. So some sort of Windows, typically server operating system. Maybe it's using Red Hat Linux or some sort of Ubuntu derivation or flavor. Uh, but typically an instance like a 2016 server or Maybe you're using 2012 R2. And the service provider in the platform as a service would normally be responsible for configuring and securing the platform. However, the user normally doesn't get administrative privileges over the entire platform. So with the platform as a service, let me read that again here. The service provider normally is responsible for configuring and securing the platform whereas the user doesn't get administrative privileges to the entire platform. If the user was given administrative privileges, then the service provider would not be able to back up all the security and configuration that they implemented. So typically that's why you don't give in a platform as a service model, you don't give um, the, the user, the consumer, administrative access, because you want to make sure you still have the ability to lock it down and configure it in a way that's secure. Whereas the last one here, the infrastructure as a service, um, you know, you, you look at this right here, essentially the, uh, the take and bake, the, the pizza dough, the sauce, the toppings, the cheese, you're, you're basically 
going to the store, you're buying it, and then you're still pretty much doing the legwork, except for the mixing the dough, putting the uh, the toppings on, the, the, you know, and uh, and the like. Essentially, you're still having to cook it, uh, you're still having to cut it, um, paying for electricity, paying for uh, you know the the soda, everything else. Um, and you have a obviously a, a great family dining room table, uh, but in the infrastructure as a service, it's really a full unfettered access to you as a user. So the responsibility for securing goes to you as an in infrastructure as a server in cloud implementations. You would need to subscribe to this IAAS, the infrastructure as a service. And if you were to stand up a Windows 2016 server, you would be responsible for the configuration and you would be responsible for managing patches on, which is a significant priority. Uh, so the catch is with the infrastructure as a service, service provider has no responsibility for security you do so it's all on you uh, and you pay a little bit less because it's all on you you're having to do a little bit of overhead so the way that this goes is that you know infrastructure as a service usually costs some money the platform as a service would cost a little bit more money i'm drawing two dollar signs there and then the software as a service is going to be the uh, the cat's meow here, and it would cost the typically cost the the most amount of money because basically everything's been done for you, um, and all you have to do is interact with a user interface. So in in all, this is typically with cloud computing how we see it formed in a shared remote computing environment for the. Uh, purpose of providing um, efficiencies, performance, reliability, scalability, and security.